Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be explaining this beautiful film scanner here. The Fujifilm SP2000. These film scanners are from approximately 2000 all the way up to 2004. They're capable of scanning 35mm film, 120 as well as APS, one, sorry, 240mm film, that's what they call it. It's going to be an in-depth review of the scanner, how it works, all the different features and process behind it, and what you have to do to get it to work. These things are a pain in the backside to get to work, but once they work, they are brilliant. So, stay tuned, and enjoy the rest of the video. So, here we are on the actual server PC. Sorry about the delay there, my camera wouldn't focus. So this box here runs the server PC. This is what receives the photos. So basically how this works, the computer down here receives the scanned input from there, outputs it to a box in the back of here through Firewire, which I don't actually use because it's a pain in the backside to get to work. You then have to output that over Ethernet into this machine here, which then allows you to see the images on this window here. So this program here is called MS01, and this basically runs the entire lab side of it. So once the scan is finished scanning, it outputs the job file over here into this separate um, environment. And once you run here, you can actually export the photos to your, your desktop or wherever you want to store them. By doing that, you basically just have to copy them from a folder over here. This would normally be full of image files after you receive them. But for this process, I'm going to show you a full rundown how the machine works. At the minute, it's currently got the slide carrier in here to, to scan mounted slides. Over there is the actual strip film holder, which is capable of doing a full roll in less than six minutes. So what we'll go ahead and do now, and we'll start the main scanner up. So down here, there's a little breaker, which you basically got to bring up. Scanner comes to life. Press this button here to start PC. So you see the green lights down there. And now we've got to wait for this thing to boot. switch the input on the monitor here. We should hopefully see the other computer. Obviously you can see here what the different components are of the computer. Like I said this runs Windows NT4 which is a very old Windows operating system. But don't be alarmed, it's still a perfectly good operating system. It does what it needs, nothing more. So I'll be back when this is booted up. So as you can see on here now, this is booting up. So I'm just going to close that. And this runs the Fuji Frontier main program. This is the entire interface that reacts with the entire scanner. Um, this software is very, very difficult to get a hold of. You will not be able to find it anywhere on the internet anymore. So if you're buying one of these machines, make sure it comes with that computer down there. Otherwise, this thing is useless. Unless you'd like to spend £2,000 on a brand new server PC. Um, it's not worth it. And in all fairness, I got my machine at a very good price. I mean, it cost me less than two full tanks of fuel for my car. Let's put it that way. It was very cheap. But it came with the caveat that it was broken. They didn't know how to get it to work. They had no clue what it was. But me being me and mechanically minded, I managed to get it going. It took me a few weeks. And also, me and my friends kind of helped out to get it going. It was a long process, but we got there in the end. And I'm going to tell you one more thing about this while this is booting up. When you buy this, all the electronics are in the back of this machine. I'll show you another video of the actual mechanics of the machine, how it works. But basically, the power supply is down here. There's an AC power supply, a DC power supply, a receiving box, a uh, lamp housing unit over here, and the entire electronics for the lamp and the scanner is all that side. The AC power supply, which is back over here behind it, there is a board on there, which is a 24 volt power supply, and they fail. And after six months of using this on a daily basis, it failed on me. Which caused many issues. And as you can imagine, I had to go and buy a new board. It was a load of trial and error, but I got it working in the end. So I'm just going to wait for this to boot up. And it should start making some noises in a sec. And my camera does not want to focus. There we go. So this little cover here doesn't actually need to stay here. This is just a dust cover for the automatic carrier, which I'll show you later on. But for now, this is the main slide and 
manual carrier. So if you wanted to do medium format, this is the carrier you use. You have different attachments here. This is a 135 strip film attachment. So you basically just strip and put the film in there, like manually. So this machine's not beaten up as you can probably hear. But your lamp should hop on in a sec. If I could focus my camera, that would be helpful. There we go, the light's on now. And the scanner's initialising itself. So, in a second, this menu should allow us to actually communicate with the scanner. See here, we have a main menu. This is how the scanner functions. This is where all the main control of the scanner is. So we do a pre-operational check. And we click OK, and it will connect to the server PC, which is over here, and it will check it's connected. Once it is, we'll then continue this. So basically, I, to calibrate this to get it to work, you have to take off the carrier. So the scanner can just communicate with that on its own. You then tell it it cleaned it. It will go to the clean position, like it will there. And you press enter and let it go. And then you'll watch here, it calibrates itself. And it gets very bright. So do not look at it with your eyes because it does really hurt. So once this is calibrated, it will allow us to scan mounted slides. I've got some here just to test. These are just collection I'm currently going through. This photo here, if my camera would focus, that'd be really nice. Which sadly it's not. Trying to do this one-handed with a DSLR is not very easy. But so we'll wait for that to calibrate, and then I'll show you how to scan slides. So we're waiting for this to calibrate, and I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, so once the scanner is calibrated, you press end on here. Bear in mind, you can use the multifunction keypad here. So now we get into the main scanning program. So I'm going to put the carrier back onto the... I don't know what you call it. The, the Sorry, this is the diffusion plate. This is the carrier. So now that's back on there. You see the lights come off the light table. What we're going to do now, we'll grab a slide. Make sure you put it the right way around. And we'll insert the slide into the carrier. And then on the window itself, we now go to export. And here's the list of the different qualities that you can export at. I typically tend to stick it on PIC scan, which is the highest resolution it will do, which generates a 40 megabyte TIFF file. And the resolution of these are unbelievable. So now the slide's in there. We press enter on the keypad. Like that. Carrier will then do a quick brief scan. And then we get a nice little window of it here. So from here we can adjust settings like the different color controls. So if I keep pressing these here, see if we get more blue or cyan. So we can have more magenta too if we wanted, make it really red, which we don't want to do here. And then obviously we've got yellow and blue as well. So I'm going to add two blue there. And then I'm going to drop the density just a little bit because it's a little bit overexposed. And then when I'm ready, I press enter on this keypad. And then now we just wait for this to do a full scan. This takes about 6 seconds, maybe 10, I can't remember how long it takes. This is for a slide, bear in mind. So a single slide, you obviously have to do one after each other, which does take a little bit of time. And then once it's scanned, the light will shut off, and the carrier will come back to the beginning, like now. So at which point you could theoretically touch the slide. Personally, just wait till it's finished so it doesn't interact to make any effects to the scanned image. And once it's back over here, once so I take the slide back out, it says, put that back in there. And if you had more to do, obviously you just load this slide in there, press enter, keep going through. But I'm only doing one just for the demonstration. So I'll click end, we'll end that order. And now we'll go ahead and load the automatic carrier and show you how that works. So I just forgot to mention, when changing carriers, you just pull it out. There's a little lever over here. If you pull that lever, it'll pop the carrier forward. So now if you want to load this automatic carrier in here, Try and do this one handed. So you get it on the grooves, and then it's just as simple as pushing the carrier in until it clicks. So we'll push this, and it clicks, the light should come on, which it does. Now we've got to go back to the main menu again. We've got to do a pre operational check, which again it's going to ask to connect to the server PC once it. Okay, so my camera died there for whatever reason. So, as I was saying, when you put the automatic carrier into the scanner, you have to reinitialize it because it has to reinitialize itself because it's pain in the backside. So you click OK on there, it will stabilize the lamp again. 
and should start to correct itself. You'll hear it does some fancy noises. My scanner has a bit of an error with it. It will say it's got a dust adhesion, but it hasn't because I've cleaned it and had it serviced and it's, it could just keep saying it. Like there we go, so we just ignore that and just continue. This will go on for about two minutes. Once this is done, you can freely go into the scanning program again, load your film here, automatically scan the entire roll in under six minutes at the highest resolution. Or if you're gonna do what I'm gonna do for this video, you can put a single strip of three in, any less than three and it will not let it happen. You have to use a manual carrier for less than three. As long as you've got a strip of three or more, it will allow you to scan it in one go. So I'm just gonna wait for this to boot up and then I can show you the actual scanning of automatic film. Okay, so now the carrier has corrected itself. Sorry if you can hear the rain in the back, it's absolutely chucking it down in England. So now the carrier has initialized itself, ignore the flashing red light, it's just giving me an error a second ago because I loaded the film before it was ready. So I've selected on here a PIC scan again, which is the highest resolution. These are just three frames of color negative. When using this scanner, you have to make sure if you're doing the automatic carrier, you've got at least three frames because two frames will not scan. You have to do a minimum of three in a strip or you use the manual carrier. So if I just tell the scanner now to take the film, it's not gonna work. I just have to take it out and put it in again. So it had an error a second ago. So it's gonna whinge. Wait for that to recorrect itself. It'll only take a few seconds this time. It won't do a full correction again. So again, when it does this, it basically shines a very bright light through there, as you can see, just to calibrate itself. So we've gotta wait for that to finish again. Then we can scan. These things are very temperamental. Once they work and they're all set up and running, you can scan hundreds of films in a day and it's fine. So again, service type is selected. We'll put the film in like that. It'll take it off me. And we'll then get some previews up here. And if you've got more than one film, so if you've got more than six frames, it will allow you to see different pages. So these numbers here will become one, two, all the way up to 36. Or if you've got more than that, it will scan more than that. So straight off the bat, these are just a wedding that I found in a folder somewhere. And density is a little bit dark, so I'm going to adjust the density. And do the same on this one. And the same on that one. And you can actually rotate them as well. If you look at the arrow above the image, it tells you which way it's going to go. And when we're ready, we just press enter on the keyboard. And it will now scan all three frames and then export the film at the end. So it's not really much more to see here. The scanner just basically worlds into light scans each frame and then it will spit the film out here when it's done. So the next point you're going to see me is at the lab end of the uh, scanner where you get the actual results and I'll show you how to work from there. So the scanner's just finished the third frame now. So what I'm going to do, film is injected over here, take the film out. Then on the keypad we're going to press the sort button. This will allow us to end the order. Then we click finish and end. And then now it says exporting the data files. So now we're going to head over to the lab server. And once you're on the lab server, you should hopefully see the actual exported images. So there's also two orders here, one from the slide I did a few minutes ago. Nope, that's from the other color negative. I'll cancel that. It's this one, I think. Yes, yeah, so this was the first one we did, which was the slide. Obviously, you can, you've got quite a few options in here straight off the bat. Let me focus so you can actually see what I'm trying to show you, because Focusing. There we go. So auto correction, basically you can see the difference it makes. It basically just fixes anything you've done wrong. Noise reduction I always put on. You've also got a few more pages here where you can do additional stuff. I tend to leave these alone and work in Photoshop afterwards. So if we rotate left 90 degrees it'll bring it the right way up. Like that. And if we click, like, click OK. Now if we wanted to export these as a high resolution TIFF. So I'll show you what I did there. Right click and so we click quick print and then we go down to export TIFF with no resize and click OK. It will now make a 40 megabyte TIFF file of this. Once the green checkbox is over there then that shows we're ready to go. So we head over to here, go to network export and you see we have a perfectly exported slide. The resolution on this, the crop factor is pretty high so if we zoom in 200% we've still got decent detail and the further we go in we don't get any distortion it's just the resolution the film can actually produce. So resolution wise on these scanners you get really really nice deep scan as opposed to a normal scanner which loses resolution after about 10% crop maybe you start to see distortion 
and then we're going to go to number 21 here which is the last one and these are the color negatives so again we can see the color negative here we do auto correction it'll bring up anything we missed do the same for all of them and if I press control A on the keyboard now I'll do quick print again resize with no uh, interlacing or anything so it'll be just raw output of exactly what the scanner saw so this is the color negative ignore the dust this is this literally is a scrap piece of film I just keep on here just to test the scanner but again if we zoom in on the crop the amount of detail we can produce out of a 35 mil negative is astronomical from a little section on there we can actually produce a really high output see these scanners back in the day were designed to print straight to a Fuji Frontier printer as well so they're ultimately designed to scan and print and the images on here what I scan at is the 10 by 12 resolution which is the highest the scanner can do and even at that the resolution is better than what I can get off my Canon 5D Mark III at scanning film so 